states in northern Nigeria are the most affected by the two forms of malnutrition, stunting and wasting. High rates of malnutrition pose significant public health and development challenges for Nigeria. In this report, Trustee Vez Adamu Imam speaks to health experts and lactating mothers in Bauchi on the matter. Nigeria has the second highest burden of stunted children in the world. With a national prevalence rate of 32% of children under 5, an estimated 2 million children in Nigeria suffer from severe acute malnutrition, but only 2 out of every 10 children affected is currently rich with treatment. 7% of women of childbearing are also suffer from acute malnutrition. Corroborating some of these concerns raised by the health expert within the subregion, Lactitude mothers at one of the facilities explained further. The reasons are very clear. If I have money, I will buy nutritious food for the children. But if not, then we have no option. The worst part is that some husbands neglect their responsibility and leave us to care for the kids alone. From the time of conception, we usually don't have nutritious food to eat. So the tendency of being malnourished is very high, and some of our children are already stunted. But we thank God for the care we receive at Tirwun Health Facility, especially the distribution of ready-to-use therapeutic food for children survival. We are currently in a difficult situation, struggling to feed ourselves even twice a day. Some of us are pregnant or nursing mothers. We have not eaten well, so how can the children be properly fed in this food crisis? Now, getting food is very hard, unlike before. With no enough breast milk, we can't escape from malnutrition. Healthcare workers lamenting the alarming trend of severe acute malnutrition among children have expressed deep concern and are calling for urgent humanitarian assistance. They emphasize the need to scale up efforts to mitigate this life threatening condition that is devastating young lives. This facility is congested during malnutrition clinic days. We receive at least 300 to 400 mothers on clinic days. We ensure that every mother who comes for their reason gets the attention they need, especially those from hard to reach community areas. That is our biggest challenge here. We usually sensitize the lactating mothers on how to use RUTF, advising them to use amoxicillin syrup first to avoid diarrhea when they start eating RUTF. If the government can do more to provide additional amoxicillin for this purpose, it would greatly benefit the malnourished children. Doctors Without Borders emphasize that collaboration is key, affirming that the region needs proactive measures to stem the tide in the health sector. They urge relevant organizations and authorities at all levels to raise media awareness about the disturbing trend and to support families in addressing this child crisis for a healthier society. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi.